Hello, I'm Jeremy Tambling. I was at Dulwich myself and I've been an academic all my life and I've written a lot on Dickens. Uh, my last teaching job was at Manchester University where I was professor of literature. It's always fascinating to see a great artist comment on another great artist, especially when it is Charles Dickens, 1812 to 1870, on Edward Alleyne, 1566 to 1626. Dickens' style in his novels is always dramatic, meaning it's directly presentational, showing, not telling. And Dickens wanted to be a professional actor, and even was booked for an audition in early 1832 at Covent Garden, which was then a theatre, not the opera house it is now. But he had to withdraw because of a bad cold. And there are several connections between Alleyne and Dickens. Both were Londoners. Both acted Dickens as an amateur. Both had a social concern for the poor. Further, something I'm sure that Dickens noted, they were both very young when they started. Edward Allen couldn't have been no more than 21 when he acted Tamburlaine in the 23-year-old Christopher Marlowe's Tamburlaine the Great in 1587. And Tamburlaine was the great theatrical tragedy which turned drama round. Dickens himself was only 24, when already a popular journalist, he began Pickwick Papers in 1836, the first and funniest of his novels, an innovatory from start to finish. Pickwick Papers indeed ends with Pickwick retiring to Dulwich, where Dickens says he can still be seen looking at the pictures in the Dulwich Gallery. We can assume that Dickens knew about Dulwich through visiting the gallery, which had opened as Britain's first free public picture gallery in 1819, and which journalists such as William Hazlitt had described. Dickens had an interest in the old school as it was in 1856. At that time, the very future of the school, as founded for 12 poor scholars, and as an almshouse on lines similar to the Charter House in London, was in question. The result of inquiries led by the charity commissioners in the 1850s showed lax management and poor education and the terms of the charitable endowment not being adequately met. And it led to the refounding of the school with the Dulwich College Act passed in 1857, creating in the place of a College of God's Gift, Allen's College of God's Gift. In the public debates about the school, Dickens, by now a famous writer, though his novels show uncomfortable with that role, joined in by chairing and addressing a meeting at the Adelphi Theatre in 13th of, on the 13th of March, 1856. All the evidence we have suggests that Dickens was a wonderful speech maker. This meeting was the brainchild of the actor and dramatist Benjamin Webster, who managed the Adelphi and the Haymarket Theatres, and Webster's aim was, the, was that the support of needy actors should be included in the renewal of the college. He specified that a quarter of the foundation's revenue ought to support actors of both sexes and educate poor actors' children. Dickens's interest in this idea was in keeping with his desire to provide funds for actors through the General Theatrical Fund, which had started in 1840, and was eligible for all actors who might easily otherwise starve to death. The reaction to Dickens' speech from the college seems to have been, predictably, prickly, and the government reaction was silence, which Dickens took as an instance of their general parsimoniousness. Nonetheless, Dickens is valuable for turning our attention to Alain, and we should note that the writer Thomas Nash in Pierce Penniless, written in 1592, said that neither Roscius nor Aesop, those admired Roman tragedians that had lived ever since before Christ was born, could ever perform more in action than famous Ned Allen. In thinking about him, Dickens was also thinking about himself, his own childhood poverty, with his father imprisoned for debt in the Marshalsea in Southwark, and his own desire to do some good, and his fascination for education, which comes out in so many novels, A Christmas Carol, Dombey and Son, David Copperfield, Hard Times, Great Expectations, 
and Our Mutual Friend. The last novel has working class schools set in Bermondsey. Both men, Dickens and Alain, had extraordinary careers that could not have been predicted. Neither allowed anything to stop them, and both of them show the value of acting, theatre and writing. Thank you.